In this presentation, we're going to be looking at Bifrost, Maya's powerful new procedural effects platform for generating liquid simulations. Bifrost is developed from the industry-renowned NIAID technology and further refined for enhanced ease of use. Fully integrated into Maya, Bifrost allows artists to easily create photorealistic simulations and renderings of liquids. The results of Bifrost can be previewed interactively in Viewport 2.0 and rendered using Mental Ray. We're going to be using Bifrost to do two different effects in our scene. The first shot is going to be a splash, so when the ship comes down we want Bifrost to make a really cool big splash. The second effect that we're going to do with Bifrost is going to be some ocean waves that are going to crash on the shoreline and have a character crawling out from underneath them. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this first shot ended up coming out like. So this is a pretty good example of what Bifrost excels at. Doing this type of work inside of Maya is now really straightforward, and I'm going to walk you through the process and explain a bit about Bifrost along the way. So what we want to do is we want to use Bifrost to generate that splash. So we're going to get a couple pieces of geometry to assist us in the process of making the pool that this ship's going to crash into. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn that geometry on. So this is really straightforward. I've got a piece of geometry that's just a polygon cube that's going to become my Bifrost liquid and I've got this other piece of geometry that's going to become the collision object or the pool in which that Bifrost liquid is going to lay. So to make this into a Bifrost liquid all you have to do is select the object, go to the Bifrost menu and say create liquid. As soon as I do that in the viewport you can see that we now have the new Bifrost container that's got some particles that are giving me the overall resolution of this sim that we have set up. In the outliner you can see that we have a couple of new nodes that have been added so we're going to dive into this Bifrost liquid node first. So this really is the solver node inside of Bifrost. It gives us the ability to adjust things like the overall resolution of our voxelized space. So if we lower this resolution or lower this size, it's going to increase the resolution, make more voxels in that space, more particles in that space. Therefore, the sim is going to be more accurate, but a bit slower. So we're going to leave this at the default value of 0.5. We have controls for where the gravity is, how big the scene is, dealing with caches. A couple of the important attributes that you really want to look at are the artistic attributes. Droplets are really key to the way Bifrost works. Droplets are particles that break away from the main body of the liquid. By changing the droplet threshold, we're controlling how easy it is for these guys to break off and become their own type of particles. The thing that's kind of cool about droplets is, once they break off, they're computationally easier to calculate and they take up less memory. The reason this is is because the droplets are no longer using liquid dynamics for their solve. They're now using ballistic motion instead. So by lowering this droplet threshold, we're basically going to be breaking that surface up a bit more, and it's going to have a little bit more spray. So let's go ahead and look at the container that we're using to emit, or the object that we're using to emit this from, and change a few of those attributes. So you can see on the emit object, there's now also a Bifrost tab. So what we want to do is we want to change some of these attributes. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn off continuous emission. I don't want particles constantly getting thrown back into my scene. So we're going to go ahead and just let it emit the particles at frame one, fill my pool up with the water, the liquid, and that's it. We're going to also switch it from the shell type to a solid type. So instead of emitting particles on the outside, it's now just filling the volume of that polygon object. Every emitter also has physical attributes as well as artistic attributes. Keep in mind that you can have multiple emitters in your liquid sim. So we're going to leave the density where it is, but we're going to change the artistic attributes for stickiness strength and stickiness bandwidth just a little bit. Basically what stickiness strength and stickiness bandwidth are dealing with are collision. When these liquids that are being emitted from this object collide with something, how much are they going to get slowed down or dragged along with that collision. So we'll put that to a value of 0.1. Sticking to this bandwidth adjusts how close these need to be until they start to get affected by the collision object. So again, we'll just put that up a little bit higher to something like a value of 0.1. So now that we've changed these attributes, we've kind of fine-tuned how this sim is going to look, what we want to do is go ahead and add a few collision objects so that my water or my liquid doesn't just drop all the way down to the ground. So we're going to go grab this piece of geometry that essentially is the pool, We'll add to our selection our Bifrost, and we'll go up to the node, or to the Bifrost menu, and say Add Collider. Pretty straightforward. So we're going to do the same thing for the ship. We'll go over to the ship, we'll grab this piece of geometry, we'll add to our selection our Bifrost, and we'll say Add Collider. So now that we've done that, 
we're ready to begin simulating this. Now I'm going to go ahead and select this node, we'll just hide this emitter, we don't really need to see that guy anymore. And with that node highlighted, the Bifrost highlighted, I'm going to hit playback. And notice my time slider. It basically changes to this color and it's cranking through this. So what's happening now is Maya is sending information to Bifrost. Bifrost lives outside of Maya. It's completely independent. So it receives data from Maya, it calculates it in the background, and then it sends it back over the bridge into Maya, which is what we see on the second bar ticking in. So this allows us moving forward to do some really creative things because Bifrost, again, is completely independent of Maya. What it does for us today is it gives us the ability to work on top of the simulation. So as that sim's happening, I can go back into my scene, I can start scrubbing through the data that's already been pushed back into it. I could even start animating, modeling, doing other things in my scene while this background simulation's happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on my environment fog. So if we go to our show menu, notice the big long list that shows up now in viewport 2.0. Basically all the dynamics, everything supported in Viewport 2.0 now, and it is the default viewport. It's what's turned on by default, which is amazing because it really is pretty awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to display some classic Maya fluids that I'm using to do this kind of volumetric effect. So not only does it show up in the viewport, but it also shows up in my render as you saw in that QuickTime movie. Now we can use this to interactively adjust it, obviously, we'll just kind of scale this down a little bit. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to dive into um, these particles that are being displayed in Viewport 2.0 of that Bifrost sim and start adjusting some of their attributes to help us better visualize how this, how this liquid's moving, right? So as we kind of bring up the attribute editor for this guy and we jump over to the Bifrost shape, you'll see that we can display particles, we can display the voxels, we can display the particles as points or spheres, lots of control inside of here for adjusting how we're dealing with the display of this Bifrost data. What I want to do is I want to just jump into the remap section. You can see that we're taking the color channel based off of velocity and we're using these ramps to drive um, to drive that and I'm not really getting that much visual feedback. That's just because this, this sim isn't moving that quickly. So we're just going to drop down the max speed to something like 5 and as soon as I do, or maybe even 3, as soon as I do that you can start to really see where that where that velocity really is, is happening and you get this really nice sense of what's going on with the movement of that water by adjusting these guys. So everything that we've been doing so far has been generating the simulation and sending it to what we call a scratch disk. And then once it's in the scratch disk, I can interactively play it back. The scratch disk is actually really intelligent inside of Bifrost, or inside of Maya using Bifrost. It has a RAM um, kind of footprint that you can specify and after that RAM footprint's been filled up, it'll basically start caching it off the disk. So it's an intelligent caching system. So this is really what the low res sim looks like. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn off this sim and we're going to load up the data from the sim that we used for those actual renders and look at what a slightly higher resolution set of data looks like inside of the viewport. It's really quite cool. So to do that, we're just going to go back to frame one. We're going to go to our Bifrost options. I'm going to tell it not to background process and I'm actually going to turn off the scratch cache. I want this cache to just load off of disk and that's it. So we'll apply and close that. We'll jump back to the Bifrost container node. Remember that's the node that basically is the solver, it's the simulator. So inside of this node we're going to turn on cache, disk-based cache. We're going to go out and browse to our storage and we're going to load up the cache file that was previously computed and saved to disk of, um, of the data that we used in that render. So we'll jump into the Bifrost ship, grab our first frame, and this is going to be a, a lot higher particle count. The information in the scene is going to look really, really cool once we kind of jump through here. And you can see that's that's what this big splash really starts to look like. And we can go back into this Bifrost node, you know, maybe put this back up to something like 10 so you can really start to get a sense of what that full res splash looks like inside of the viewport. And we can just kind of jump around this. And again, it's just loading that data right off of disk extremely quickly. So that's our first effect done with Bifrost inside of Maya. The next one that we're going to be playing around with is going to be the ocean crashing on the beach.